What's up guys, Mitchell Watts with Town & Country TV and today I'm going to be explaining a little bit more about my personal truck. Uh, so I had a good customer of ours that uh, bought a vehicle from us, an, a lifted F-250 as you can see there right there on the screen and on the way out of the dealership he saw me he was like, that's what you drive? Come on man, I thought you'd have been driving a lifted truck. And that is actually what prompted this particular video is why do I, Mitchell Watts, that has everything to do with all these cool custom cars and trucks that you see in the background, everything from the SCA Black Widows to TC Customs F-150s and 250s and all these kind of tricked up. Why do I drive an F-150 that does not have a lift kit? And that video is right now. So a little bit about it. First off, I'll tell you about the truck itself. This is a 2017 F-150. It's a 302A equipment group, which means it's an XLT. It's the upper trim level of the XLT. Why am I driving this truck? Well, primarily uh, because of the price point. Uh, I've mentioned to you in a couple of the other videos that you've seen of ours, uh, talks about you know uh, what is the best value for the F-150. Well, some people see more value in going up with the, the, the Lariat. Some people are like, you know what, I got all the features I need in an XLT. Some people, I got all the features I need in an STX. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just personal opinion. Um, this particular F-150 is actually a leased vehicle. So this is an FMCC red carpet lease. Uh, basically what happens is, is I purchased the, or leased this thing back in 2017 and uh, I've got about 30,000 miles on it, I think. Let me check. Uh, it's been a minute since I've actually looked. Yeah, 30,502 miles on it. We'll show you in the inside in just a second. Uh, but 30,502 miles. And at the time that I had that got this vehicle, the leasing was the better option for me. It was about $100 less less per month on the payment compared to a normal purchase. Uh, the nice thing for me being in the car business is that I get another vehicle every two to three years, give or take, uh, on the situation. And this situation is going to be three years. Um, but why do I not have a lifted truck? Well, I've already kind of mentioned to you, it's a leased vehicle. So the only downside to doing a full-blown six-inch lift kit or a four-inch lift kit with BDS is you actually have to cut a piece of the metal off of the frame. And then when you do that and you go to that big six inch lift kit, you cannot bring it back to factory. However, what you're looking at here is a two and a half inch leveling kit and it is crazy windy out here. So I don't, hopefully you're not picking up any wind noise, but as you can see, this particular truck, my actual truck has a two and a half inch leveling kit and it does clear. Uh, I, I've said it in the past that it's a 35 inch tire. It's not exactly a 35. It's like a 34 and a half. These are a set of Raptor takeoff wheels and uh, tires as well. So they're BFG AT ko 2 tires uh, wrapped around a set of 17 inch Raptor wheels. And as you can see, no crash bars have been cut or modified in any situation, front or back crash bars for that matter. And it's got plenty of room. I will tell you that the leveling kit I've got on this truck is what they, it's a mammoth two and a half inch leveling kit. And basically it's just one puck that sits at the top and it pushes everything down. I will tell you, uh, if you haven't had a chance, I've, I did a video a few years back uh, when I first got this truck and first got the leveling kit installed and I kind of showed you a little bit more about it. Uh, you can check out that video if you click up there in the cards. Um, but after driving this thing, about 28,000 miles worth of driving with this leveling kit, uh, it drives fine. Uh, when you hit bumps or hit like a speed bump or something, you can tell that the suspension is a lot tighter. And believe it or not, even though this is a two and a half inch leveling kit, you can tell a difference between this two and a half inch leveling kit and the BDS leveling kit. The reason for that, as I mentioned to you just a second ago, the puck on my Mammoth kit is literally just one big puck that sits on top of the strut. The BDS has a smaller puck that goes on top and then it has another smaller puck that goes inside the strut. And what happens is because of that, it doesn't cause as much stress on the suspension and it's not as tight and actually won't bottom out nearly as easy as this setup does. And that's the reason that I put this Mammoth kit on there and I haven't recommended it is because for the same money or similar money anyways, you can get the BDS leveling kit and it's got a better ride quality to it. Um, and so there you go. I'm. As you guys know, I, I'm not afraid to tell you exactly like it is. If I like something, I'll tell you. If I don't like something, I'll tell you that too. And that's one of the reasons we've been talking about that BDS leveling kit for quite some time. By the way, if you want a BDS leveling kit or any of these custom parts and trucks, uh, custom parts that we sell, if you click on the link down below, the tccustoms.com, and use the code SHIPFREE, you get free shipping anywhere in the lower 48 states for anything that we have on that site. So make sure you check that out if you want some more information. Let's talk a 
little bit more about what I've done to this truck and modified to it. Um, I actually put a hard trifold bed cover on this truck, but I took it off and it's actually a pretty cool story that I told and that I want to tell you about. Um, so the first thing you'll notice, I've got the spray and bed liner, but I've also got the forward bed mat that goes in the bottom. That just keeps me so if I'm putting something heavy in the bed of the truck, I don't have to run the risk of it denting or it just, it's an extra level of protection. Um, and the reason that I even have that is this, is this bed mat was carried over from my last truck that did not have a spray and bed liner. So the last truck didn't have a spray and bed liner. I put this bed mat to protect it. When I turned that leased vehicle in, I just carried this part over from one truck to the next one. And that actually is a good point with this bed cover that's not on here right now. You can actually see over here, you've got the rails that run the entire length of the bed. So the bed cover I have, uh, I purchased it back in 2015, I believe it was, for my then 2015 Ford F-150. And it's the hard trifle bed cover. And just the other day, I had to haul some stuff to the dump using this truck and I needed to get rid of the bed cover. Well, it was really simple. You just fold it all the way up and then there's two thumb screws, one that reaches here, one on the other side. And then literally I by myself picked it up and carried it out, put it in the bed of the, in my garage. So it's very simple with no tools at all to be able to take that hard trifle bed cover on and off. It's one of the reasons that is our best selling uh, uh, tonneau cover uh, here in recent history and we absolutely love that particular bed cover. Uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of the truck and I'll show you a couple of things that we did there. Now I will tell you please don't roast me on how dirty this truck is. I live in this truck. I, I, yeah it's it's pretty nasty but Josh the cameraman He'll tell you that this is probably the cleanest he's ever seen it. Uh, but anyways, uh, so as I mentioned to you earlier, this is the XLT. So it's got the cloth seats. You can see what the seats look like of 30,000 hard miles. And like I said, I've had a lot of people say, oh, I don't know if that cloth is going to soak up all the stains. Well, I think this is pretty good proof that um, uh, unprompted, this is exactly what these seats are going to look like. They do a really good job of holding up from spills and things like that. But the next thing I want to talk about is going to be the WeatherTech floor mats. The WeatherTechs are great. I, I don't have any questions or concerns there, but I will tell you that those corners of those WeatherTech mats have a tendency to peel up or curve up a little bit. And what happens is you can even see where it's a little bit loose right here. Sometimes these corners will fold up, you shut the door, and you can't ever get them to lay back flat because these things are laser cut. Um, I really have no complaints other than them uh, kind of getting caught up on the on the sides and you can really see what I'm talking about looking at it right here you can see how they just kind of are a little bit loose they lose their fit and finish over time now keep in mind I bought these WeatherTech mats back in 2015 as well so the bed cover the bed mat and these floor mats were all transitioned from one vehicle to the next and that's the other nice thing about a lot of these accessories that you can do you don't have have to have all these permanent modifications on, on your vehicle for it to look nice or, or I, I think it looks nice not everybody might think this but uh, realistically inexpensive leveling kit inexpensive takeoffs if you can find a set on marketplace something like that uh, and you can take these mats and the the floor mats and the bed mat from truck to truck to truck as long as the body style is not changing and that doesn't happen very often and the word on the street is with this new 2021 model it's going to also remain the same and so that is a little bit more history about why i don't drive a lifted truck me being who i am and having this huge love of lifted trucks now i will tell you though that if this truck was purchased it would be lifted with a six inch lift kit not the coilover kit but the six inch uh, strut spacer kit probably within the same day i just can't justify and really you don't need to be permanently modifying a vehicle that you're going to have to turn in at a later point in time and that brings me up to another point is we've had a lot of customers that say hey i want to lease this you know tc customs truck yeah you might can lease it but the money factor and the risk excuse me the residual value of the vehicle is not going to be increased based on those accessories that you add and therefore it makes that payment drastically higher than just leasing it and then doing a couple of small modifications or just purchasing it outright. It ends up being cheaper to purchase a modified vehicle than it is to be leasing one, depending on the amount of money that you're spending on the modifications. And so there you have it. That's a little bit more of a look into why I don't drive a lifted truck. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it kind of gave you a little bit of inspiration. Oh, uh, you know what? Before we let you go, I do want to talk about as far as the reliability. Was there any concerns or questions with the vehicle? Uh, I have not had any issues with the vehicle 
vehicle. I've had oil changed every 7,500 miles, haven't had any issues with uh, any warranty claims. Um, I'm just trying to rack my brain. I, I think it's literally been oil change, tire rotation, oil change, tire rotation. As far as the, um, the, the, now, if you want to ask me about my wife's 2020 Explorer, that's a whole nother conversation. So just in case you're so, oh, he works for a Ford dealership. He's not going to tell you the truth. My wife has had plenty of issues with her 2020 Explorer, but this one has been solid as a rock. Uh, keep in mind, it does have the 5.0 V8 and it does have the six speed automatic transmission to go with that. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you found it somewhat entertaining, please hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us with the algorithm and make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel with the bell notification turned on so you don't miss a single video.